Saturday, November 4, 2017, was an average day at the Ritz-Carlton in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Nothing was out of the ordinary, so nothing could prepare the country for what came next. Many guests were in town for business, while others were checking out the beautiful five-star hotel when everything went on lockdown out of nowhere. At about 11 p.m., guests were summoned to the hotel lobby. Staff instructed them to pack up and bring their bags if they were there on business. They couldn't leave anything behind because they wouldn't be coming back. Instead, they'd be moved to another hotel. If the people were visiting, the police swiftly escorted them out. There were no exceptions and zero explanations. These guests didn't know how lucky they were as they were being whisked away to other accommodations. As for the people checking in over the next few days, well, they wouldn't be as lucky. In fact, they were in for a terrible surprise. The Ritz-Carlton in Riyadh was turned into a prison by the Prince of Saudi Arabia. Soon, the rooms were filled by the who's who of Saudi Arabian royalty and business elite. There were many familiar faces among the guests turned prisoners. They all wondered why they were there, and more importantly, when they could leave. The answer wouldn't be that simple. It turns out that King Salman and his son and heir Mohammed bin Salman let's call him MBS, ordered their arrest. The motive behind this bold move depends on who you ask. Some people called it consolidation of power, while others called it a power struggle. In the end, MBS came out on top. Many princes, current ministers, and Saudi government officials were detained at the Ritz-Carlton. These were high-ranking, well-connected, and powerful men who held high positions of power within Saudi culture and government. In an instant, they were fired and replaced with new officials, surprising many across the country and the world. It shouldn't have been, though. Those who were newly appointed were all MBS supporters. The king and MBS claimed the entire spectacle was to fight decades-long corruption, but others were more suspicious. They smelt ulterior motives. Perhaps these moves will make it easier for MBS to assume control as the future king after his father's death. The pair laid the groundwork for this back in June 2017, when there was a reshuffle of royalty. The king kicked out his nephew as crown prince and named MBS his new successor. While some were shocked, signs of this power shift had been evident for years. The former crown prince had been removed from critical decisions and sidelined during diplomatic events in favor of MBS, including meetings with former U.S. President Donald Trump. In hindsight, that reshuffle and mass imprisonment sent a clear sign. MBS told the country and the world not to mess with him. The power consolidation was in full swing, and it wouldn't stop there. MBS said the imprisonment would combat corruption in Saudi Arabian business and politics. The kingdom claimed they found at least $100 billion had been misused for decades. That included both systemic corruption and embezzlement from inside and outside the government. MBS wanted to hold everyone who played a part accountable. He promised to make changes in the established order in Saudi Arabia, and this was his first step. But he couldn't start by just throwing influential people in jail. That would be a nasty look. It could be culturally damaging and insulting, leading to steep consequences that could potentially break the ties that bind Saudi society together. That wouldn't do, so instead, he booked them in one of the most affluent hotels in the world. The Ritz-Carlton in Riyadh is a luxury five-star hotel with royal suites, a men's-only spa, 52 acres of gardens, fancy restaurants, and more. U.S. presidents and other world leaders have stayed there. It's among the best of the best, even after being converted to a temporary prison. MBS cut off all communication once everyone was in their cells. His prisoners could not contact the outside world. All the rooms were booked, and nobody was allowed in or out. They were there until they reached an agreement with MBS, though at the time, they didn't know what that agreement would look like. MBS eventually released his prisoners, but not until they paid hefty financial settlements. No one other than MBS knows how much they all paid, but nobody moved until they emptied their wallets. He accused every prisoner of misusing funds over the years. To him, it was only fair they paid it all back, whether the accusations were true or not. As a result, most were stripped of their power, including the former king's son. He was fired from his role as head of the National Guard. Even though the prisoners were in a luxury hotel, they didn't have a luxury experience. Anonymous sources reported they were coerced into things they didn't want to do or say. Guards roughed them up to get the results MBS wanted. Many of the prisoners were sleep-deprived. Some were hurt so badly that they had to be hospitalized after their imprisonment. One former general even passed away. They never offered an official explanation of what happened to him, but it's likely the result of his treatment. 
during imprisonment. MBS and his people denied the harsh treatment and refused to comment further on the imprisonment. What happened at the Ritz-Carlton will remain a secret between those who were there voluntarily and those held against their will. The end result was the same. MBS consolidated power. The Ritz wasn't the only hotel holding prisoners during this time. They housed more people at the courtyard by Marriott a nearby hotel in Riyadh's diplomatic quarter when the Ritz filled up. These rooms were not nearly as nice. It was only a four-star hotel. But it was good enough to house those MBS accused of corruption. But you would never know it was a secondary holding place for prisoners if you asked the hotel. The receptionist played dumb when questioned by reporters. She said she didn't know about the high-profile prisoners and didn't comment on any of the people arriving at the hotel in the last few days. Whether they voluntarily checked in or not, guest privacy was of the utmost concern. Regardless of the reasoning, the Marriott Hotel, like the Ritz, was completely booked through December 1, 2017 and they were not taking new reservations. Anyone staying there had to leave and find new accommodations, and any existing reservations were canceled. Precisely what happened at the Ritz. Public imprisonment wasn't the only thing MBS was doing to weed out his enemies during his rise to power. At the same time, he'd established a group of dangerous men called the Tiger Squad. They were 50 of the most dangerous people in Saudi Arabia, pulled from the Secret Service and the military. Each brought a series of unique skills meant for one purpose, to take out dissenters against the Crown and MBS. Their methods were more subtle than others. They didn't overtly take down their targets. No, it was much more sinister than that. Instead, they staged house fires, car accidents, plane crashes, and poisonings. Everything they did came with a plausible explanation. It all looked like an accident. The Tiger Squad didn't want to draw attention to the purge. They simply wanted to silence those deemed as dissenters. That included journalist Jamal Khashoggi, taken out by the Tiger Squad. Jamal went to the Saudi consulate in Turkey to get papers he needed to get married. Instead of documentation, he was met with 15 men who quickly took his life. Enemies of MBS and the Crown were dealt with swiftly, though the severity varied based on their power, position, and wealth. Now, not all who got arrested in Saudi Arabia faced the same five-star treatment. The government reserves those privileges to the most important people. If an American gets arrested, they could face more severe and harsh punishments. The laws are much different in Saudi Arabia, and you may not even know you're breaking one. Regardless, you'll face serious repercussions. You could be expelled from the country, arrested, imprisoned, or even executed as a result. For example, if they catch you importing, manufacturing, possessing, or consuming alcohol or illegal drugs, you could be jailed, fined, flogged publicly, or deported. If you're caught trafficking substances, the sentence is capital punishment, with no exceptions. There are U.S. embassies in Saudi Arabia, but they don't have any standing in courts to plead for leniency. If you do something, you're on your own. The U.S. Embassy can't get you out of jail, provide representation, pay for fees, or serve as an interpreter. Instead, the Embassy can connect you with representatives that speak English or your preferred language, give you information, obtain medical care, and notify your family of what's happening. All fees and penalties are your responsibility. It's in every person's best interest to become familiar with the local laws before visiting Saudi Arabia. Ignorance is not a defense. And if you get detained, always ask that they notify the U.S. Embassy on your behalf. They won't always do this for you, so it's your responsibility to seek help. MBS has been on a mission to reform Saudi Arabia's image, and they invested $64 billion to do so. They began by inviting top musicians like Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, and Sean Paul to look more fun and inviting. They want to attract Western attention in a good way, and they're sparing no expense to do so. It's not just about entertainment, either. Under NBS, they've ended bans on women driving, mixed-gender concerts, and cinema. They want to increase domestic spending because oil prices have been declining, which is the country's biggest industry. They're attempting to appear more progressive, no matter how small the steps they're taking. But some claim it's all smoke and mirrors. These actions only distract people from the more serious things going on in the country. Anyone who criticizes MBS appears to go missing. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Scholars, activists, economists, journalists, and so many more have all been put behind bars for speaking their truths. MBS is the future of Saudi Arabia. Regardless of whether or not you believe in what he's doing, you need to fall in line or face the consequences. And those consequences will be steep. 
just don't expect to be put up in the Ritz-Carlton. That's reserved for the ultra-rich and powerful. Click to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comments section, would you rather have to go to prison at the Ritz-Carlton in Saudi Arabia for six months, or would you rather pay a $10,000 fine?